this started is I, I got the pain in each shoulder, went into my chest. But then as I, closer I got to home, everything started feeling better. And when I got home, it was really good, you know, just like before. And I thought, well, can't be a heart attack. My wife's a crossing guard, and she was down on her corner. And, um, and she got home on Thursday evening. This had come back again. So I told her about it. She said, you better call the doctor. He came to us in a, in a very bad shape. He was in, uh, in the so-called advanced cardiogenic shock because of his uh, severe heart attack. They took a, some sort of a scope and went back and forth over my heart. And she said, there's something wrong here. And here what it was, there was a hole opened up in the center uh, of my heart where the two, two sections join. And then uh, Dr. Von Yossi told me he can't fix it. So I had to make a choice. If I wanted to live, I had to go on to this. It is a dramatic event that, that happens relatively quickly and, and escalates relatively quickly. That's why we're fortunate to have some of the new technologies, ECMO, Total Artificial Hearts. Prior to you know, the year 2000, there would, be no, there would be no other options. He never would have been shown up here. Um, but now we have some other options for these, for these relatively quickly advancing states where we can, uh, we can take care of a lot of people and actually get them on to, like I said, the next sort of steps. There it is. It's home alive. Now this is powered off of the wall socket and two onboard batteries here. And if you want to go somewhere, there's a plug on the side that you unplug, and then it automatically goes to the to the batteries. Then you've got to keep an eye on the time. You know how long it's been on those batteries. I mean, there's a lot of support uh, from family, from other caregivers out there that's required uh, for somebody to have a device like this and go home with it. It's not just the patient. It has to be 24-7, uh, able to get help, able to troubleshoot, able to, to take care of other things. Well, right now, the, the total artificial heart is only a bridge to transplant. It's not used as what we call a destination device, meaning that that is all the patient gets. He goes home, this is his his final support. Uh, so right now everybody who gets a total artificial heart is, is a transplant candidate. Uh, they said that there isn't anything more they can do for me in here except give me a place to sleep until one would come. So they said you might as well, if you, you know, want to, go home and wait there and we'll call you. So I like that idea. The smaller driver allows the patient to go home. That, per se, is improving the psychological well-being of the patient, improving the quality of life of the patient. Yeah, it's been uh, five months since I saw the house. Well, you, you miss the atmosphere, you know, the, the, the place, the people, everything. I was out and around walking all the time in the neighborhood and stuff, and I knew all those people. <laughs> The technology in the last couple of years has advanced, you know, just, just incredibly quickly. So we have more devices, better devices, and they keep coming. And it's not the end. His artificial heart isn't the last iteration of this device by any stretch of the imagination. Well, I just want to thank them for all their, their help and caring and everything. They were all good to me. So I can't say enough good about them. That'd be about it. <laughs>